Yeah, it's one for the men. A Suzuki. Don't ask me about it, I know nothing, but it was just that. There, it's Lewis Knock Halls, Cottingham, 1787 to 1847. Gothic Revival architect of the Savings Bank House. And that's a lovely house. I'm just doing around the Abbey Gardens. And there is a reason for that. I promise you, there is a reason. Now, the Abbey is between the cathedral. Now, if you look at that, the tower uh, is new. It's not that old. I can't remember how old, but I think they finished it about 20 years ago. I could be wrong. I will go in there and have a look. Um, that's the Norman Tower house. It's beautiful. I'm not going to film it because it might be someone's house. I'm not entirely sure. Um, by the looks of this car up here, we may have a funeral. So if we do, I'll have to stop filming. So we're just coming along here, and that is the other side of St Mary's Church where we have just been. Can't you see that? Now this is called the Great Graveyard because it is so big. So we're just going up there. Right, I'm just going to pan down here. Lovely arcade of trees. I love a tree. I do. Churches and trees. And queens and kings. Well, yeah. To be honest, there's not a lot I don't like, is there? Snakes. Don't like snakes. No, we're just and gonna... heights. And heights. And needles. Bugs and insects. Don't like them. Okay. There's a lot I don't like, really, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. We're coming up to here. Now, the reason I'm coming up here is because there's two things that fascinate me and, the, and Mr. Great British Churches. See? We just... There we go, look. There's the other side of St. Mary's. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that doorway there. I didn't see that before. That is amazing. That's glorious. Now, let's see it. Right. Now, Henry Cockton, is that the one? Yep. Right yep. Right, it's Henry Cockton. There we go. And his remains are in the churchyard somewhere. And if anybody wants to know why he's so wonderful, my husband actually Googled him, turned out he's a ventriloquist. So, and there we go, and there's an old stone coffin down there. It's a bit overgrown. Now this one, now this one, you can't really see it very well. Reader, pause at this house. Pause at this stone, stone uh, to record the tale of something south. This is very warm from the last time I saw it. By the, I don't know, I can't see it. It's it Sarah here. Lloyd. Now, it's a warning and I believe she was in a house fire and she was a little bit wayward and um, becoming the instrument of she suffered a just but something death yeah the house of mistrels of her mistrels and of brothers and house within these were her last words may my example be a warning to thousands 
and I believe she was caught in a house fire. Uh, 17.99. 17.99. So there you go. Let her words be a warning. But what those warnings are, don't know. Anyway, I'm going to be right back with you because we're going to try and find the tennis courts. We don't know where they are. So as soon as we find them, a we'll... font there. yes, as Laura's pointed out, is a font. It's probably a Norman font. I don't know. We've got another one here. Oh, this is the Charnel House. The one that, in memory of Captain Bartholomew Gosnold. I'll get, try and get closer so you can see this. Ah, and I know about him. In memory of Captain Bartholomew Gosnold, explorer and prime mover behind the first permanent settlement in North America at Jamestown, Virginia, where he died 22nd of August 1607. And also of his family buried in this churchyard, his wife Mary, her parents, Robert and Martha Golding, died 1611 and 1614, and his daughter Martha, 1598, hence Martha's Vineyard, 1602. And I think also he is related to the family that we done when we went to Shelley Church. Ah, come full circle. We did, uh, a lot of these places do come full circle. Um, like we had the Duke of Suffolk and we've had Mary, in St Mary's Church there. Um, and the Duke, when Henry made Charles Brandon Duke of Suffolk, the Duke of Norfolk didn't like it. I think he was hoping that he was going to be Duke of Suffolk, but he didn't like it. And where we've parked, which is opposite the Norman Towers that are here, they're either side of the church, and there's a place called Angel Hill, it's a car park. And you'll see there's a big hotel called The Angel. And Mary, Queen of France, oh, she was Duchess of Suffolk at that time, sat there on a throne and expected everybody to remember that she was the Queen of France. It wasn't, it was a fur coat. I stood on it and it rolled. <laughs> but just look at these. I love these buildings. Um, they're just amazing. I don't know if they've been made out of the ruins or what. They look like they have because there's not a straight line in sight. No. It's amazing. It's like a melted house to me. It reminds me of like a hobbit house. Yeah. It's beautiful. It really is. It's, I think it's using up um, bits that they've found. Putting it back together. So, try not to film in the windows in case someone's in there. Anyway, we're going to be back with you shortly. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. My phone died. Technical error. Technical error. <laughs> St Mary's is bigger, or was it originally, but because this plan had space to expand, it became the cathedral. So we just take a walk through the Abbey Gardens. And I'm hoping we're going to find a tennis court. Because there could be something very special in it, under it. Let's have a go around the corner. I think that's just a garden in there, isn't it? That's the bowling green. So this is all the old abbey. You can see from the bits of thing. There we go. To commemorate Her Majesty the Queen's Golden Jubilee visit to Bury St Edmunds, 17th of July 2002. Oh, they don't sell ice cream in there, do they? <laughs> right, so, I'm going to go around here. Now, that's the bowling green, I think. We'll be back with you. Right, we have walked quite a distance. And you can see the rest of the Abbey ruins. Now, this would have been where Mary... Queen of France would have originally been buried somewhere here. Um, but someone else was buried here and moved. 
we're going to carry on walking because we've got to go right past that tree, down there, over a bridge, turn left to a tennis court. Dear viewer, I bring you to the best places. <laughs> we'll see you in a second. So I am now back with you. I'm taking over the wheel. I've left my mum somewhere. But you can really see how big the old abbey actually was. It goes on for quite some distance. If you follow me through this way, this is the bridge that we were told to cross. More than anything, it's a really lovely place to come for a walk. Or, if we keep following, a game of tennis. Even here we've still got some ruins as we climb up this little incline. And here are the tennis courts. Now somewhere in one of these corners, and we were informed by the gentleman that we spoke to at St Mary's, and they've done a recent surveillance and they've found a square shape underneath one of the corners. And the tennis courts are due to be refurbished, so when they are allowed to dig up for refurbishment, they are going to do some more investigative work. But here, potentially, could be the resting place of St Edmund. Because Bury St Edmund is the final resting place of St Edmund, um, and he was the King of East Anglia. He is also known as Edmund the Martyr. He was king between 855 to his death in November 869. And here we go, here's some more of the ruins here. We're just back, I've just had some people walking past. So the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, which generally described few matters relating to the East Angles and their rulers, relates that here the army rode across Mercia into East, Ang East Anglia and took winter quarters at Thetford, and that winter, and that winter King Edmund fought against them and the Danish took victory and killed the king and conquered all that land. Where Edmund was killed, and whether he died in battle or was murdered by the Danes afterwards, is not known. The great heathen army invaded Wessex in late 1870, where they were confronted by Ethelred of Wessex and his brother, the future Alfred the Great. Edmund was buried in a wooden chapel near where he was killed, at a date generally assumed by historians to have been during the reign of... Um, Ethelstan, I think, who became king of the Anglo-Saxons in, in 924. Edmund's body was translated... I, I can't pronounce this word, I don't think, but Hegel's done, the location of which has never been conclusively identified. Yeah. So this is the rest of the room. We do have to keep stopping because we keep getting people. It's a glorious post-summer day. <laughs> it's September the 15th, so everyone's still out and about and catching the last few rays of the summer sun. Yeah, so that is potentially the resting place of St Edmund. So on my way back to finding my mum, I'm just going to give you a little bit more of a glimpse of the rest of the ruins. Yeah, here's a model of what they think 
used to be like. So it says down here, the Lost Abbey. It is hard to imagine the scale and splendour of the Lost Abbey Church. It was roughly twice the size of St Edmundsbury Cathedral, but after its closure any valuable building materials were taken away and everything else is left to gradually decay. So that's that bit. Right over here is this bit right there, a little bit in yellow. So that is the Lost Abbey right there. Well, we're just sitting here in the Abbey Gardens and you can see we've got a bit of a stump there of it and there's a bit of the ruin. And I think this must have been part of the Abbey as well. I've just been looking. That bit there is the Lost Abbey. What, this, that big bit? Yeah, just behind that tree. Right, that's, that's the Lost... How can it be lost? It's right there. I'm trying not to film because there is someone sitting on the bench there, but you can just see that there's. Oh, I'm gonna have to film. I'm sorry. You've got like a little, I don't know, doorway, whatever it is there. Yeah. So this is. To be honest, it's quite a nice visit, isn't it? It's mm. quite a nice walk. You see, you've got the um, cathedral there. Now, the cathedral, as I said before, it used to be the Church of St James's. And then in 1914, um, it was decided it was going to be a cathedral because it only got one road going past it, as opposed to St Mary's, where we've just been, um, who has a road going at the front and down the side of it, so it couldn't expand. This one could, so it was just decided that this was going to be the cathedral. But like, it's, <laughs> well, it is. We are going to try and sneak in there. And film but I haven't got permission to film so we probably won't speak so hopefully we'll see you again in a bit thank you and uh, thanks for watching bye bye